And then you gently bring your hands towards your own heart center into prayer pose. And you bow towards your own heart and to all of the hearts in the space. Taking a moment to experience the V space amongst us. In the inner knowingness that we are all an integral part of it. And that all the parts create the whole. Asatoma Satgamaya Tamasoma Jyotirgamaya Mitroma Amritangamaya Aum Shanti 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 Inhale deeply, suspend your breath. And we exhale. We open our eyes, we bring our hands, we interlace our fingers, and as if you're hugging a tree. And then from here you inhale up, exhale to parallel. Inhale and exhale. All breath is through the nostril right now. Eyes preferable are closed. Feel the slight arch in your lower back, mid spine, upper spine. We're creating more spinal fluid movement. Make sure your arms stay really rounded. Every time you bring your arms overhead, you lift your diaphragm. Just a little bit more. Keep going. Good, inhale. Bring your hands on top of your head. Exhale, lean over to the right. Inhale, center, exhale, left. And continue, always inhaling to the center, exhaling to the side. Without any force, just leaning into it, leaning into the opening and into the expansion. Good, one more minute.
You might experience that you can go a little further now down to the side. The body's a bit warmer. Make sure you're not leaning forward or backward, but really truly to the side. Good, and then we gently come to center. And we come back to hugging the tree. So, and now I want you to take your head with you. We, because we twist to the left and to the right. So keep your arms rounded. Inhale left, exhale right. Preferable all breath is through the nose. Besides that, this is great for your organs. It's also great for your waistline. Really swing your arms from side to side. So if you would like to want to ring out your midsection. Good, and then slowly come to center. Keep your arms here for a moment. Inhale deeply. Suspend your breath. Pull your perineum, sex, organ, navel in and up. And then exhale. Now turn your palms outward. And you just make big rotations up to the sky. And then the palms are down facing the earth. Inhale up. Now exhale, open the mouth. Like, Let the eyes follow your hands so that you stimulate your eyesight. And then from here, we want to reverse the direction. Breath pattern stays the same. Exhale down, inhale up. Last one. We come to center. And now I would like for you to just bring your thumb in between your middle and your index finger and then bend all the other fingers. So you just squeeze your thumb in between middle and all the other fingers. You do this on both hands. And then I want you to go into the breath of fire. So you hold your arms by your side. And breath of fire is an equal in an exhale through your nostrils. So just make sure on the exhalation that your navel moves backwards. It's like. <laughs> and 
for those who are not used to breath of fire, you know, if you need to take a regular breath in between, please do so. We're purifying right now our blood, supporting our immune system. Last minute. We take a deep inhalation. We suspend our breath and we tighten every muscle in our body. We get really uptight. We even squeeze our thumb or the fingers. And when you exhale, you relax your hands onto your knees. You can keep your eyes closed or open them slowly to be with me in a minute. Thank you, Sidi. You're welcome. Um, first, I'd like to welcome Fern to our circle today, to our Sangha. She's joining us from Maryland, so we're getting the East Coast flavor. <laughs> and just so happy to see new faces. Thank you, Fern, for joining us. Um, so, so many things to say. I'll try not to go quickly, which is my tendency when I have a lot I'd like to share. The first is that we had our um, opening a uh, healing circle yesterday. And um, there were nine of us on the call and or on the uh, in the circle and uh, seven more have joined since then. So we have 16 women who are a part of the healing circle. And um, I will put all of this in our email, uh, weekly email, but we're changing the time from 8.03 uh, AM Pacific time to 8.30, 8.30, so that City's class can join us. She has a class in the morning on Friday mornings. Um, but if you would like to join the Healing Circle or you would like to be held by the Healing Circle, please feel free to contact City or me and we'll add your name to our list um, of our community members that, we're, that we are supporting. And our healing, we're just sending our healing into the world, not just to um, our own group, but into all sentient beings everywhere. And it's powerful, it's really powerful work and you feel cleansed yourself. Participating in the healing circle is definitely self-healing as well as helping others. So I encourage any of you that would like to, we sit in silence for 11 minutes. So from 11.30 to 11.41, and um, every Friday morning. And we don't, you don't have to go on Zoom. You don't have to join a call. You just have to stop wherever you are and take that 11 minutes to be in the stream of healing and giving and sharing energy. So it's a beautiful practice. So I invite you to um, be a part of that on the receiving, the offering or both. Thank you for the ladies who've joined us. It's really, it's really unchy, it's good. Um, one of our members who is on in the healing circle actually had surgery yesterday after um, the healing circle. She participated in that and then she went to the hospital and she's doing well. Um, I'm happy to report one of our um, Sangha members and, um, but knowing that she had the support of our circle was really powerful and important to her. So we can support one another in that way. Um, if something's going on in your life and you need support, that's what we're here for, to support one another. So 
please feel free to reach out. Uh, Mother of the universe, I wanna talk a little bit about that today. Um, this last week I had the privilege of joining a call with the Dalai Lama. A friend of mine had orchestrated a conversation between the Dalai Lama and of several Nobel laureate women, peace, Nobel laureate peace prize um, women over the years. And their um, discussion was what is the women's contribution to humanity and healing? And he spoke, they had a questions, a question and answer moment between them, but then he also spoke, the, um, His Holiness the Dalai Lama spoke on how he sees women in the world. And I think this is so important for us as our circle is held by women. He spoke about the most important piece for healing our um, humanity and the planet. He's really, really interested in healing the planet issues, planetary situation and Mother Earth. And he said that the, the core foundational piece of that is women. And he gave this experience, this, um, this definition. He said, women are the, they're the mothers that carry the energy of healing, compassion, nurturing, sustenance. He said, where does the milk come from? Where is the nurturing of the young come from? It comes from the woman. And he said that our job um, as women is to take this. We are really the fulcrum of healing. And he said that society has shifted that over the years to heroes. Heroes are the ones that we look at and those tend to be males. And he said that the women, the, the power and the extraordinary possibilities that we hold as foundational healing to this planet and the humanity on this planet comes through the lineage of the women. And he said, there's, you know, there's so many other things that women are concerned about and equal rights and pay and respect and safety in our communities and many other issues which are tantamount, they're important, but they aren't the underlying capacity and gift that we have to offer back into the world. So there are many things that we can do, but he said, as women, not as a mother, but as women, we are already mothers to the universe. And that is already the role that we intuitively have. So how to be really present in that role and imagine that just as we are, how we enter into a community, how we offer ourselves to one another is an example and a witness of how we are healers, naturally healers, every one of us. So we have that opportunity and that responsibility to step into that role and communally as women gather in that power and in that fiat that we have as healers, we will be able to engender the healing that happens on this planet. That it isn't a mindset. I mean, there's so many scientific things that need to happen with the planet and there's so many emotional things with individual healing. Those are all important, but just as a natural foundation to the possibility of healing, women have all of the tools we need. We come in with those. That's what we exhibit into the world, um, whether we're even attempting to. You don't even have to be in a practice. It's just how we are. So when we concentrate on that, when we focus on that, imagine the power that we have to impact healing. And we can start in the healing of ourselves and we work outwards. We work on our own self-healing and then we work at our family's healing and then we work at our community's healing and our state and our country and our planet. We just keep moving that expanding as we expand in our practices and our understanding of our peace of the whole, we just keep expanding. What our intention is and how we're holding it just goes from being an internal singular process to a multifaceted process in the world. And women come in, this is our piece. If we look at it through Eastern um, philosophy and Eastern, Eastern tradition, the women are the ones that are the Shakti is the energy that goes into the world. It's the energy that makes things happen. The Shiva energy is the idea and the consciousness that holds it, but it's not the action. So if we don't take action and use our own power fiat, um, all of the tools that we came with, change will not happen. He said, the Dalai Lama said, without women making the change happen, it won't happen. It won't happen through men. That's not men's job. That's not how they came into the, that's not the, the relationship, the co-creation relationship is not that both male and female are nurturing in that way. We have different roles. And this is just inherently, the mother to the universe is inherently our role. 
So all of us can take that on. Um, it, the, he said that the mothering our children is just a microcosm to the, the macrocosm of the cosmic healing. So it, even if you have not mothered individually, you still have that mothering capacity to offer into the world and healing. So I want us to really focus on that because this planet needs to be healed, both in the human existence on the planet and the actual planet's function, how the planet is functioning. And this COVID is just one indicator of how out of balance we are. And it's allowing us the opportunity to step back in and say, what's my job? What's my role in this healing? And love and compassion are two um, of the most significant ways that we can heal one another through love and compassion. And we carry that intuitively through our heart chakra, through our heart space. So how to offer yourself as that spark of divinity, which we spoke about last week, that in every situation, you are that. You are offering that into the world. So I invite you to be that spark and to be that love, to imagine yourself as that love. Um, so Monday is a full moon. Why do we care about that, ladies? We care about that because we as human beings are intertwined with the natural world around us. And when we stay separate from, and we don't use the uh, indications and the tools and the wisdom that comes from the natural world, we are not taking advantage of all that's being offered to us. There's so much information that comes from the natural world that we maybe receive or maybe don't. And the movement of the moon is a huge piece for us as women. The moon is symbolizes water and we are water and we are fluid and the moon regulates our, our, whole, our whole hormonal balance and how we are in the world. We are moon creatures, women are moon creatures. So how do we take advantage of what the moon is trying to teach us or share with us? Um, so you may or may not know this, I'm just gonna do really briefly, but because it's a full moon and I want us to really experience that, what happens during a full moon and how we can um, bring in that incredible vitality and energy that's happening, that explosion of energy that's happening in the fullness of the moon. You may know and you may not know that the moon goes through all 12 of the zodiac astrological signs every month. It's in each sign for two and a half, approximately two and a half days, two and a half to three days. And when it is in the sign, whatever sign it's in, that the attributes and the qualities of that sign are heightened when the moon is in that. So if you know, I think the moon's in Virgo right now, or it's just about to go into Virgo and it will be in Scorpio when we come to the full moon on Monday evening, it will have moved out of Virgo and into Scorpio. And each of these aspects or signs represent a possibility for us. Some of them are more um, intuitive and you might be feeling you're really intuitive during that two and a half, three days. Some of them are more action oriented. Um, each of the signs has its own attributes. And we're just gonna talk about Scorpios because that's where we're headed. But the truth is that if you wanted to spend a little more time on it, you could see how, if you wanna go with the flow of the universe where it's already going and not fight it, you can use that flow and draft on it. So for instance, if you are wanting to start a new project, there are certain signs that are more advantageous for starting a project than others. So it would be in your best interest if you have the luxury of deciding I'm gonna do it in the middle of the month or the beginning of the month to line yourself up with the natural energies of the universe. Why would we go against it? Why not? We already know it has to do with how close the planets are, what their trajectory is. All so, there's all sorts of information around it, but it's very simple for us to just look at it as a, um, a template and say, there's a beautiful app that I like to use on your phone. It's called Luna, L-U-N-A. And it shows you, if you look at the month view, it shows you every two and a half, three days, which sign the moon is in. So you can just follow it. And you can, it's particularly interesting when it hits your sign, because those are the days when you have heightened intuition and your frequency is shifted. You're most in alignment with the moon during that, that period when it's in your sign. So that's a heightened time to look at if you want to be 
you know, just to notice, to start noticing what's my rhythm, even taking notes and saying, I notice when it's in Virgo, I feel this way. When it's in Scorpio, I feel this way. And then you have a, a template for how it is that you intersect with those different signs. Just an interesting thing. It's a, another piece of how do we become in alignment with that which it was here long before we were and will be here long after we are, the natural pieces of the universe, such as the moon, how do we get an alignment and, util and use that energy? Don't go against it, go with it. This is so Zen. How do we go down the stream and go around the rocks instead of trying to, to actually get through the middle of the rock? Let's take the power that's offered to us naturally and utilize it. It makes our lives so much more pleasurable because there's a wave that we get to ride that's already happening naturally. We don't have to swim against it. Let's go with that stream. Let's go with the direction that things are going. Um, so the moon, the moon is entering into Scorpio on uh, Monday and Scorpio is really powerful. Once a year, we're gonna be in this Scorpio moon and it is one about, Scorpio is a water sign. So it's about going with the flow. It's about being fluid, about being, willing to just adapt to what's coming, but it's also really important because it's about taking us to the heart of what is important in our lives. It's about empowerment, sexuality, intuitive awakening, purging. This is a time when we can utilize the energy of the moon for that period around the full moon to actually go deeper into what it is that we're being called to do, into what it is that we have a desire and a uh, an urge to go towards. Use this moon to illuminate the full moon illuminating us. Watch the full moon be out on Monday night. It, I think it's at 1031 is the full moon. So for those of you in Pacific time, um, it's perfect. You can be out under the moon light. Let yourself be washed with the moonlight and be receptive to that energy that the moon is naturally giving to us. It puts a spotlight, this Scorpio moon will put a spotlight on the things that we've been putting off, but that are important for our progress forward. It's going to reveal unconscious parts of our lives if you're willing to see it. So take advantage of this moon and take some time when you have time to look into, get the Luna app and start tracking yourself what times of the month under which signs of the zodiac are you being most sensitive or most creative or most receptive or most interested in being out into the world or which moment which ones are your most most interested in being more silent and more sensitive into your own space and start knowing your rhythm in relationship to the moon it's really, really powerful. And it teaches us to be in relationship with all of creation around us. If the idea is to stop being individuals and to be part of the whole, then we have to be in sync with the whole. We have to take the time and effort to respect the moon's movement as being important in our lives. Now, I wanna leave you with a micro practice. Um, one of the mysteries of the universe, many of the mysteries of the universe have been written in so many different ways in sacred writings, but there, there's one particular writing, a, a writing, a very old writing that's called the Vyana Bhairava Sutra. It's known kind of colloquially as the Bhairava, which is God, Shiva, um, it's the male aspect. And it's the sutras where um, poverty and Shiva are having a conversation when she first comes to him and she has a conversation with him about, I want to know the whole universe. Teach me about the universe. And they have a beautiful dialogue in the beginning of these um, sutras, the first, I think 30, 23 to 30 sutras. Then it starts, those are um, basically uh, stanzas. A sutra is basically a stanza in the writing. Then it starts with 112 ways in our everyday life. So he's teaching her how the universe in its existence, the way it is, is all the inspiration we need for enlightenment. That we don't have to go anywhere, we don't have to sit any, all we have to do is to take that which is coming to all of our senses and allow it to permeate us and its fullness of the expansion of the possibility in this physical form can take us to enlightenment. And he teaches her 112 ways to do that. Now the original um, teaching is quite 
laborious to get through, but there's a beautiful translation that I'll put up on our, on our toolbox and also send to you this week. It's called the Radiance Sutras. And it's written by a gentleman, Lauren Roche. And he studied for 40 years the, this um, Bhairava Sutra, Tantra Sutra, and came up with basically a poetic interpretation. So it's very readable, very accessible, and it's exquisite in its beauty. And he has it in both the Sanskrit and the transliteration and then in English, so that you can see the original if you want. Um, and then you can see how he's translated it into his experience of these this teaching. It's so powerful. And I, what I'd like to say is that this is a very simple. The sutras are short. They're like two or three lines. You can take one a day. It's a very small micro practice, but if you take one of them a day and you focus on that and you bring that into your consciousness and you live through that, it will transform how you see the world and how you see your intersection with your spiritual journey. And it's a very simple thing to do. And I'll tell you, it's hard to read one. I, I've been reading them and I have to force myself to close the book because I wanna read all of them in the same day, which you can do, but it's nice to just settle on one. So um, I will share all this with you, but I'd like for you to imagine that you can take a journey through this beautiful poetry into how it is that we move ourselves towards this awakening that we're all here to do. Thank you, Sidi. Sorry, I couldn't stop talking. <laughs> That's all right. <clears throat> so, and I think it's great, you know, that we will have, you know, access to the book and have it, you know, as a practice. I think that's beautiful. Good. I, I thought it would be wonderful to just sit with our palms facing forward. And then we touch the tip of our middle fingers with the tip of our thumb. Yes, yeah, so we're balancing the ether element. We, we're really working on our compassion and our patience here. Yeah. And it's so what, you know, Nirmala shared, I think those are our gifts as women. And then I just want you to close your eyes and stay with your breath this morning, following the inflow of your breath and the ex, you know, the exhalation. Listening to your breath. Listening to the fullness of your breath. And also listening to the softness of your breath. And then with each breath, you allow yourself to go a little deeper. Touching the divine within you.
From here, we very gently let go of the mudra and we're bringing our palms together. And again, bowing to our own heart and to the, all the hearts in this space. May we take the time around this full moon as a time for reflection. And for reflection, we need space. We tune out with Aum Shanti Shanti Shanti. Um. Thank you. <laughs>